Hey guys, James Hall with Bassmaster Magazine here with John Jones of Locale right. Ranch Pond and Lake Management again. We're uh, chatting more about Lake White. Okay, yeah. Uh, we surveyed earlier today, right? And we um, we got some great data on the bass here at Lake White, which was super inspiring. But we also harvested and shocked up a great amount of non-sport. Uh, Tra well, some people call them trash fish. Yeah. Some people will call them undesirables, and y'all were calling non them non-game. Not yeah, who knows what they're yeah, called? Yeah, nugget. Anyway, y'all know what we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, it's fish that you don't want to. Catch. Correct. Okay. Correct. But, correct. But there are people that love those fish. Yes, yeah, sure, okay, sure, so. sure. And kudos to them. We yeah. are about bass. Okay. We're bass, all bass, all the time. So what I want to know is, as we are netting these fish, I'm I, in my head. I'm thinking there is there. This is not good. I can see why this is would mess up my bass fish in this one. But I want to know if what I'm thinking is right. So I'm going to kind of throw the names of all these different fish that we that we harvested today. Okay. The non-game fish, and uh, let me it. know okay. if it is something that I need to worry about and that they need to worry about if they're in their ponds or if they're just fine. So we're going to start. You ready? Got it. All right, here we go. We're going to start with um, the big yellow carp. I mean, we got some monsters. Monster. Of those. Common carp. Today. Common carp. All right, yeah, yeah, common carp. So we saw a lot of common carp today. Mm -hmm. Okay, what did we notice about them? They're all 20, Ginormous. 30 pounds, right? Yes, big fish. enormous. Uh, you know, some folks eat those. I don't, but they can be eaten. They're certainly overseas or the main sure. sport fish. Um, why I don't like them is because they disturb both our bass nests and our forage fish nests. They're big, a little bluegill isn't going to push that fish out of the way, sucking off the bottom the whole time. You're gonna see a trend with all these species why I don't want them in your lake. Okay. And so I believe, what did we notice today? We didn't see a lot of, we didn't see a lot of recruitment with the largemouth bass, right? right? We, we know that they've spawned. Mm -hmm. Okay, how many schools of bass did we see? Zero. And very few, there, a tiny. Couple, a couple little ones, but no schools. Mm -hmm. And so when I look at that, okay, maybe this is the reason, maybe not. But I believe that you had poor recruitment. You have too many of those big non-game species that are bottom feeders, mm -hmm. stirring up the detritus, taking the eggs out of the nest, whatever the case is. And I want more bass in this lake. So those fish, I don't want them in here. Now, are we going to get all those adult fish out of here? No, it's going to okay. be hard. Right. We're going to electrofish and we'll get some of them out that way. Sure. Maybe, maybe not. We'll do some gill fishing and things like that. But I think most importantly, we want to try to limit their reproduction so we don't have more. Of them. Then okay. over time during flood events, most of those species like to go that way and they'll go on out of your spillway. So we, All right. yeah, we'll see. We have some rain. Yeah, yeah <laughs> right. Okay. But that's why we don't want common carp and a few other carp species that we saw. Okay. Uh, and so would you consider we saw these crazy looking suckers? Mm -hmm. They're these long... Like long, skinny, flat-bottomed carp, mm -hmm. are those detrimental to a uh, situation here? Yeah, you know, some I, I put them in the same category, although okay. they don't get as big. And uh, there's there's a lot of different species of them. I don't know how many are here in the state, but um, one of the things I do like about them is they generally don't get too big. Hmm. Okay, you notice we didn't get any longer than this, right? You do notice my guys sometimes call them a Snickers bar, so. <laughs> If a bass targets them, good-sized bass, they can make a nice meal. Okay. They have the same issues that they're feeding out the bottom. They're making the water muddy. We talked about some of the pros and cons of your off-color water, but certainly muddy water is less productive, and those fish are contributing to that. So I'd say not as bad as common carp, but something that we don't want in the lake. If we eventually get to where we have a lot of 10-pound bass in this lake, we will not have those fish in there. They will simply all to eat now. Okay, well, good. All right, so not terrible. Not terrible, but right. great. Here's one that bothers me a great deal, and I don't know why. Uh, maybe it's the teeth. What about gar? We got a lot of spotted gar today, and we and 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 one of us missed a bunch of spotted gar with the net. Not pointing, not pointing <laughs> fingers. But tell me how a gar can uh, impact a fishery like this. All right, well. There's a lot of different species of gar. Today we only saw spotted, although I noticed when looking at the reports, it looks like we saw long nose in one of the mm -hmm. surveys here. Um, I just generally, I like to keep things real simple. So we're gonna say that each one of those gar is taking the place of a largemouth bass. Mm -hmm. And so we saw, what, over a hundred gar today. Mm -hmm. And so that's a hundred less bass that this lake can support. Mm -hmm. Now we've got more than a hundred gar in here, of course. Right. So we want to remove those gar because they are eating the same fish that our bass are going to eat and i'm just going to say one to one maybe it's not quite that but i like to keep it simple so those are out of here simply because they're taking away resources from the, the fish that we are managing for okay 
Uh, drum. Mm -hmm. Same th same issue with the with the drum as we have with the carp. Yeah, I would say uh, they get too big to eat. Um, I say small. Maybe they make a nice bait. Saw a lot of drum in here. Mm -hmm. I mean, I haven't seen that many drum in a while. Um, they are going to make a lake muddy again. Um, I was telling you a story earlier off camera about a lake that was full of, of, of drum and when we killed it within a few minutes, that lake had cleared up blue like the Caribbean. That's crazy. And there was a lot of drum there, okay, yeah. but it's amazing. They really, really stir up the bottom. Um, you're not gonna catch them, generally not the way you're fishing for sure. And so guess what? They're out of here. Yes, good, I like it. All right, now. Now we're gonna get into some species that are a little bit more controversial, perhaps. So how about uh, channel catfish? Channel oh, catfish, well, I noticed that you didn't love catfish. I don't love, yeah. I know. No, and one of those reasons is because when our feeder goes off mm -hmm. with this incredibly you know, high protein and fat food, a giant pot of those things come up and it seems like they're eating the food as much as the bluegill. That's, there's a couple of things I don't like about catfish. First, I like, I like catfish because they're easy to catch. They're fairly hardy. Kids like to catch them. Um, they're, it, there's a lot of ways to catch them. They grow fast, okay? Downsize, number one, we're using 50, 60, $70 bag fish food. Nope, we don't want catfish eating that. Now they'll grow unbelievable on that. I've seen them grow 12 pounds in two years. Oh Lord, okay. That's a lot of food. That is a lot of food. Another issue they have, if a lot of times they're stocked as a put and take fishery. If we, man, if we build a lake correctly, they're not going to have babies in that lake. So it's important to be aware of that in this lake. They will, but a normal lake that's built from scratch, they're not going to we'll go into that some other day. Um, but if you put them in the lake and you have, say you put in 400 channel catfish in a one acre lake, mm -hmm. that doesn't sound like that big of a deal, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe they all get to one pound. Well, that's 400 pounds of channel catfish. Now, what if they all get to 10 pounds? Mm. That's, okay. I, I can't, I, I need a calculator. <laughs> okay, let's get to 4,000 pounds, okay? Oh, Lord. The problem with that is you're going to have a fish kill. So a lot of times people okay. don't harvest enough catfish and they're going to have fish kill. Um, catfish are directly competing with bass for the same forage resources. So, you know, I don't love them from that standpoint. But number one, you already hit it. If we're trying to manage for bass mm -hmm. as an apex predator, we do not want the bait going to catfish and we certainly don't want our fish food that's supposed to go to the bay to go to the catfish. Right. So, in this case, catfish kind of out. <laughs> they're, they're mostly out. All right. And now here's one that, that I've heard a lot of different opinions on, and mm -hmm. we have, and I've personally caught some big crappie in this mm -hmm. lake, and we uh, we shocked up some nice crappie okay. and some small crappie. Mm -hmm. So, what is your opinion as it, especially as it relates to competition for forage on crappie? Well, I'm gonna maybe go a little bit left field here and not agree with most biologists. Mm. I don't find them to be as big a deal as they're made out to be. Good. Are they a problem? Well, maybe, yeah, a little bit. They spawn earlier. Um, there's issues with bass fry recruitment. There's some issues with other bait recruitment because of the timing of the spawn. Um, but we've been involved with thousands and thousands of lakes at this point. Mm -hmm. And I can't point to more than a handful that I made crappie management anywhere close to the top of the list. I don't think they're that big a deal. I think you shouldn't. People love the idea of catching and eating them. Man. I've Even though we stalk a lot, I find that they're not really targeted often, although that's changed a lot with some of this new sonar and things. People can find them. If they're easy to find and they're easy to catch. And so I think that's going to be a boon for crappie management moving forward. If people can catch them more, they're going to want to grow more of them because they are delicious. So in this lake, I'm neutral on Okay. All right. Well, neutral. I, I can I can appreciate that because they are fun to catch. Yeah, exactly. And they are delicious. Mm -hmm. So, all right. So I think that uh, hits all of the non desirables that we saw here in Lake Y. Um, are there any others that you've seen in other lakes across the country that people should know about? Well, there's there's a bunch. I mean, we can go down a long list, but there's a lot of different gars from alligator on down to spotted mm -hmm. ones. Those um, you have a whole different there a whole group of different carps. Grass carp in high density, that can be a real problem. Mm. Um, and so that can be go from desirable to undesirable. Uh, tilapia, well, that sounds great. If there's somewhere that they overwinter, they can become undesirable as well, because believe it or not, they eat fish and they, they, uh. can, they provide competition. Some of the bigger sunfishes, like green sunfish and warmouth, are generally undesirable because while they compete for certain size classes of, of bait, mm -hmm. they uh, don't get big enough to be a sporting fish per se. Um, what are some other undesirable species? I, I'd say that for the most part, it, okay. like, you have a bunch of suckers. Uh, gizzard shad, uh, 
Uh, yes. We saw a gizzard shad today, and, and you know, we saw a lot that was this size. We did notice that two or three of the biggest fish had gizzard shad yes. in their stomach. Right down their throats. Um, when they get really big, they get too big for anything but the very biggest bass, and I'd say that they become undesirable. Um, I think that pretty much covers the, the stuff that you're going to see day in and day out. Well, you're good. Well, that's then that's great information. And so not so there's not a disaster looming with fins in the lake, <laughs> but um, there are things that we need to do and things that will improve our bass fishery uh, as it relates to these non-desirable fish and the removal of said fish. Well, we're going to remove, but we're also we've been talking about bringing in some better bass genetics in oh, yeah. here. Well. Uh, one of the ways we're gonna control these non game species is by getting more larger bass. And so one of the things we're gonna do this year is put some bass in here that are, are disposed to get bigger and and as such, long term, we're gonna reduce the amount of these undesirable species. Awesome, awesome, all right. Well, folks, there you have it. What you want and what you don't want. It's kind of your uh, your decision based on what you want your bass fish to look like. But we hope this information helps. And we hope you tune back in to the Lake Y Project for more information just like this. Thanks, John. Hi, you bet.